Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And my question is to the Minister for International Development in the Pacific, and it relates to the aid program. Overseas development assistance is a key part of Australia's foreign policy. It's the way we support economic, social and human development. It's the way we help the poorest people in the world to climb out of destitution and despair. In a region where millions of people still live in extreme poverty, it is also in Australia's national interest to strengthen our commitment to development. Development means greater prosperity, security and stability in our region. The coronavirus pandemic makes the aid program more important than ever. Many countries in our region have poorly resourced health systems that have struggled to cope with the epidemic, the pandemic in fact. Many countries in our region have also been hit hard by the economic fallout from COVID-19, particularly our Pacific neighbours who rely heavily on tourism. The World Bank has estimated that COVID-19 will push an extra 88 to 115 million people around the world into extreme poverty in 2020 alone. Extreme poverty means surviving on less than $1 US a day. The pandemic has reversed 20 years of progress in global poverty reduction. That throws into stark relief the fact that this Liberal government has cut $11.8 billion from Australia's aid budget since it came to office in 2013. $11.8 billion in cuts. Those cuts have not only hurt some of the poorest people in the world, they have been contrary to Australia's national interests. The cuts have fallen heavily on countries in Southeast Asia. The government has cut bilateral aid to Indonesia from $551.9 million in 2014-15 to $255.7 million in 2021, a cut of 54 per cent. It has cut bilateral ODA for Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos, the Philippines and Vietnam by 44 per cent since 2004-15. Deputy Speaker, I do acknowledge that the budget provided $304.7 million over two years to help Pacific countries to recover from the impacts of COVID-19. I also acknowledge the Minister's announcement after the budget of $500 million over three years to support access to COVID-19 vaccines in the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Labor welcomes these measures. These are good measures. But the truth is they are a drop in the ocean following the government's $11.8 billion in cuts. The extra $805 million for development assistance represents only 1% of the budget's $71.3 billion in new payment measures, 1 per cent. And the ministers have said this funding will be temporary rather than ongoing increase to the aid budget. Deputy Speaker, an important issue for the development program is the need to evaluate whether aid investments are achieving the desired outcome and represent value for money. Minister Payne and Minister Hawke have used the pandemic as cover to dismantle the aid performance framework. They have systematically removed key elements of the performance framework for ensuring that our $4 billion aid program is performing effectively. They have abolished the Office of Development Effectiveness, the agency introduced by Alexander Downer to conduct rigorous and independent evaluations of aid projects. They have scrapped the performance of Australian Aid Report, the independently verified annual report card on the aid program, which was introduced by Julie Bishop. They are no longer publishing the annual aid program performance reports, which report whether Australia's major country and regional aid programs are meeting their performance benchmarks. They have even abandoned Julie Bishop's strategic target of ensuring 80 per cent of Australia's aid investments address gender equality issues, a curious decision by Minister Payne, given she is also Minister for Women. <laughs> the government has not met the gender target in any year since it was set back in 2014. But instead of stepping up the focus on gender issues, uh, these ministers have responded by dropping the target. One can wonder whether that was the motivation to drop the target, the systematic underperformance and inability to hit the gender target. This dismantling of the performance framework has been carried out secretively with no public announcements and no consultation with stakeholders, all under the cloak of reshaping the OIC program in response to COVID-19. These changes represent a massive erosion of accountability and transparency. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, having cut the aid program by $11.8 billion, these ministers are now scrapping the key mechanisms which have ensured our aid dollars are spent effectively. Taxpayers can no longer be confident that the $4 billion aid program represents value for money and delivers real outcomes. So, my questions to the minister are, when will this government provide an ongoing boost to the aid budget? Why has the minister dismantled the entire aid performance framework? And why has the Pacific step up resulted in a step down everywhere else? <laughs>